today we're gonna draw flowers and we're gonna learn how understanding a bit of botany can help us draw them better. If you wanna understand flowers and plants better as you draw them or sketch them in your nature journal, these are the main things to keep in mind. We wanna pay attention to the numbers of things. We wanna pay attention to the numbers of petals and their arrangement, the number of sepals, which are the leaf-like structures beneath the petals, and whether those come in increments of five, three, four, are they odd numbers or are they just numerous? In plants um, that have this many petals, like 10 or more, and that are variable, they might not always be the same number, we will just call those numerous. Next, we wanna pay attention to the ovary. The ovary is the part that turns into the fruit and on some flowers, it is um, a pod-like structure. On other flowers, it will turn into, uh, I think, what's called a capitulum on these flowers, or it can turn into a fruit. We wanna pay attention to that ovary. Is it on top of the petals, such as in these flowers here, or is it below them, such as in this flower? And if it's above, it's called superior, and if it's below, it's called inferior. Next, we wanna understand what the male parts look like. The male parts are often these um, pollen containing two, two lobed structure here on a longer stem like thing um, that produce pollen. And I'm not gonna get into all the names, but just knowing that there's male parts and that there's female parts. The female part is often has a receptive end and is connected to the ovary that turns into the seeds. Some flowers also have what are called a fu fused petals or fused sepals. And those are the important things to understand about flower structure. One other thing to understand is the difference between radial and bilateral symmetry. Some flowers, you can look at them from above, and no matter how you draw a line through it, it will be the same on both sides. Other flowers can only be divided one way and have that type of symmetry. Sometimes knowing about the subject that you are drawing gets in the way of drawing. When we're too focused on the identity, we might accidentally draw what we think about something instead of what we see about something. However, there are other instances when knowing about the biology or the physiology of something will actually help us draw more accurately. So today, we are gonna look at the plant parts, the flower parts that make some of the main and most important families. That way you will be able to draw them more accurately and focus on the important parts when you are drawing plants in your nature journal. Let's start with this family right here. Many edible species. This is the Brassicaceae. It contains all of the mustards, the kohlrabi, cabbage, kale, cauliflower, all of those plants. And we're gonna look straight at the morphology so that you'll know how to identify it and what to draw from this plant in the field. So knowing how many petals, it has four petals. And even though on this one, it looks more bilaterally symmetrical, this could be considered radially symmetrical as well. It could be divided multiple ways and still be symmetrical. And if we look closely, we can see that there are also what appear to be four sepals. So these petal-like structures underneath the petals. See, there's four of those. And now let's look inside of the flower and peel these, we'll peel these petals off here. And when we look on the inside, we can see the male parts, the ones that are dusted with pollen. You can see those right there coming up on a little bit longer of a little branch there, which is called the filament you can see the pollen holding male part. We're not gonna get into all the details of all the names, but just knowing that this is the male part and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. One fell off. Um, and now we're gonna peel off the male parts. Sorry, boys. And see what we're left over with. So this is the female part and you can see there's the receptive tip on there, and then this will be the ovary. And luckily, we have some of the ones that have already been pollinated on this flower stalk, and you can see here, if you've ever seen any radish seed pods, 
you've seen that they have this long look such as that and this is the ovary so this will develop into seeds on the inside and you can see the remnants of the female receptive part so we looked at the male part we looked at the female part the petals attach below the ovary and so that means it's a superior ovary because the ovary is on top of the petals there are four petals arranged in a sort of cross type shape there were six male parts and that's all that we need to know to identify this plant. So now let's draw it. All right, so starting with an overhead view helps see some of the arrangement, but a side view is helpful for others. I'm put using numbers to record the number of petals and the sepals and a drawing showing the symmetry would be useful as well. Here I'm zooming in on the one that I've removed the petals from and I learned something cool while doing this. It seemed like the sepals were stuck to the male parts. Now I'm drawing a, a zoomed out version of the entire inflorescence showing the pods and the overall sizes of everything. Next, we're going to look at a very big family, some of whose members might surprise you. Is there any members in your family who don't seem like they fit? Well, the rosaceae might be like that. As you can tell from the name, the rosaceae is named for roses. Also in this family are many fruit that you eat on a daily basis, such as apples perhaps. These are apple flowers, and some of the important things of, that we're going to look at, of course, are the number of petals. So let's start with that, and you can see that on most of these flowers here, there are five petals. And even though this one's not completely symmetrical, um, because one of these petals is a little bit crooked, this would be considered radial symmetry. I could put a line through this flower a bunch of different ways, and it would be the same on each side. So we've got five petals, and I'm looking underneath, and it looks like there are five sepals as well. So sepals are the petal-like structures that are often green or intermediary between petals and leaves that are just underneath the flower. I'm actually gonna pick this individual flower off here. So you can see the sepals there underneath, they're curled back. And let's look at the male parts now. So on this one, it's a little bit harder to tell the difference between the male and the female parts, but um, the parts that have the pollen on them are the male parts. And you can see a lot of, a lot of them, like in our drawing that we did earlier, have two sort of sides to them. And it looks to me like this would be considered numerous so that means they're almost um, not worth counting because of how many. And it looks like there are multiple female parts, unlike the last one we looked at. And it kind of looks like one, two, three, four, five. So we've got five petals, five sepals, numerous male parts, and five female parts. Now let's look at where the ovary is. Obviously the ovary is a female part and you can see on this flower, there's that little bulge there underneath the sepals. So unlike our last flower, the ovary is underneath the sepals and the petals. So that is an inferior ovary. That will turn into an apple. And when you get your apple, there will be the remnants of these sepals on the bottom of the fruit. So when you look at your apple and you see that bit of your apple that has those five little things, that's the leftover of the sepals and there might even be dried up bits of this flower here. Does that look anything like an apple to you right now? And so those are the main characteristics to notice in this family, rosaceae. So let's draw this flower now. I'm starting with the overview of the flower cluster and then zooming in and, and showing the symmetry. And I'm peeling off the petals and showing what the male and female parts look like once the petals are removed. Another good reason to have some of this background botanical knowledge when you're drawing flowers is you know what you can make up 
A lot of times when we're drawing, and especially when we're painting, we make things up, such as leaves or the number of spines on an animal or something like that. If we have the background information about what's important and what's less important, we know what we can make up and what we need to make right. So for example, if you know that the apple blossom has to have five sepals on it because it's in the rosaceae, when you're drawing this cluster of flowers, you're not gonna fudge that and make it up because you know that if you make six or eight sepals on one of them or three on another one, that that's not accurate. So you know what are the things that you can make up and what are the things that you can't make up. So far, we've looked at two plant families with radially symmetrical flowers. Now we're gonna look at a plant family, the Fabaceae, the bean family, that has flowers that can only be divided in half one way and still be the same on both sides. As you can see, I could put a line through the middle and this flower will be the same on both sides, but if I put the line through it this way, the flower will be different on the top than on the bottom. Bean family um, is divided into subfamilies, and so this is the, the Fabaceae, I think it's the Faboides, the, the subfamily is the beans and the peas, and they have very unique flower morphology, which I won't get into all the technical stuff, but you can see it has this big one on the back, there's often sort of like a lip one on the bottom, and there's these ones on the sides that open up, um, and this bottom one often pulls down in a really cool way that f forces the pollinator to come in in a way that um, sets the flower up for pollination. So you can see that a lot of the male and female parts are actually hidden in this flower. So this is one of those flowers that if you just look at the outside, you can't see everything that's going on. On the back, we can see the sepals. And on this flower, the sepals are also... Um, only bilaterally symmetrical and there appear to be five of them and i think there's five petals as well this one back here is a fused petal and this one on the bottom um, is also sort of fused but let's get in there and see if we can find the male and female parts this is one where you're gonna have to give yourself if you're just getting started a little bit of uh, forgiveness if you can't figure out and count everything but I think I'm gonna start pulling these parts off. So I'm pulling off these two side petals. Um, and let's see what we can see now. I see pollen in there. And I think I see, I'm not sure if I see the receptive parts or if I just see the pollen bearing parts. So let's draw this one now. This is a much more complex flower. So I could have spent a lot longer on this one. I tried to focus on the basic parts, the symmetry, the numbers of male and female, but I could have asked a lot more questions about this flower. Very weird. I hope you had as much fun and learned as much watching this video as the fun I had while making it. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel for more similar content. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out these two videos here.